All right, so I've been animating on the stage and doing these color shifts to heighten the transformation, right? So when this happens, there we go. The color changes. Now I'm going to take that layer style, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it onto these additional layers. So next is 23. And now I'm going to change it so it's not so strong. I'm going to set it to soft light. Right. And then I'm going to copy that layer style. And I'm going to put it onto frame 24. This will all go by so fast, but it will it's all meant to just heighten the acknowledgement that these pieces of the landscape are being knocked out. Oh, but I just pasted it to the wrong layer. So remember the frames always work with a layer, the one that's at 100% opacity. So it's all about kind of organization. Frame 27. There we go. Now I'm going to let it start to fade out. Frame 28. Paste layer style, where is it? Frame 29. So now when I paste the layer style, I'm going to change its opacity from 40 to 20. And then on the next one, I'm going to change that opacity to 10. So I'm fading out that kind of blue. And then on this last one, I'll change that opacity to just 5. So that when it moves, you don't really notice this color shift set back to normal right before the things grow back. Okay, so now I have this color shift that happens each time something gets knocked out. Then it resets, yellow, pink, blue. All right, so now I'm happy with that. How do I save it? I just hit Command S. This is my stage file. I am done with my assets because all of those changes and the color shifts on the frames, that's all animating on the stage. So you don't see evidence of that in the assets because it's just done with layer styles. But I save both of them. I keep my stage open. I can close my assets. And then what I'm going to do is say File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. That is the only way you can save a GIF animation with an animation script embedded into it. If I just say File Save As, like I would do a JPEG or a PNG, and I save a copy, and I go to GIF, G-I-F, I'm going to do it to the desktop so you can see the difference, and I hit Save, the problem is a GIF file does not need to be animated. A standard GIF file is just a basic raster file. So to animate it, you want to have that animation script embedded into it. So that's why you do this full step of saying file, export, save for web legacy. And then you get this GIF animation screen after it processes, 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 right? And we can shrink it so that we can see it all on screen, play it. And I like to have these settings. These are mostly the default settings. Selective color selection, 256 colors, which is the most you can have for a GIF. And then I just change the quality to buy cubic smoother. And then if it plays through and you kind of like the timing, then you just say save. And it will save with the same name to the last place you saved, but it will add GIF at the end of it, G-I-F. 
which stands for Graphic Interchange Format. And these are the 256 pixel colors that it's using to make this whole animation. Okay, now I'm back to my stage and I can close it. I'm done for now. And I can close Photoshop. I'm done for now. Because now I need to post that GIF to Canvas. So I'm going to edit my Canvas post. And I'm going to show you what it looked like before I started today, what I posted at the end of last class. And then I'm just going to add next to it this new one that I saved to my desktop. Drag it in. I usually mark these online formats as orange. Let it process. If it's more than 100 frames, you might need to shrink down its resolution a little bit from 150 down to 100 or even 72, but don't go less than 72. All right? Now I'm going to save. And now we can see these next to each other. They should... Oh, it's just funny. For the time they process, they start at slightly different times. But you'll see the one on the right has the color shifts, and the one on the left doesn't. So that just he helps heighten that transformation a little bit. So those are kind of post-production decisions. Okay. Now, I am ready. Move this in. So I'm going to add to this. This is a copy of my GIF with color shifts. Okay. Now I need the third requirement of the assignment. The third requirement is a refined storyboard, and you can only do it after you have your GIF animation finished. To do your refined storyboard, and I've demoed this once, but I said I would do it again this morning, we're going to open up our stage file, not our GIF. If you open up your GIF file, then your, your refined storyboard will only have 256 color options. Right? So it's not as high quality as your PSD stage file. So if I open up my stage file, we're exactly where we left off, but this time I'm going to do an extra step because notice my frames now look different than my layers. I don't see any of that yellow or that pink in my layers, and that's because it's only there as layer styles on specific frames. So, what do I do? I go to my topmost layer, and I select it, and then I go to my, my timeline options, timeline window options, and I say the opposite of what I did to get my frames into my timeline. I say flatten my frames into new layers. Flatten my frames into layers. This is a good step for everybody, even if you didn't do any animating on the stage. Just because it makes it clear at this that you're done with your animation, and now each layer is its own frame. So you see frame 36, frame 35. The only caveat is now I have layers and frames. And so I want to, to save memory, go down to frame 1, right? Maybe mark that. I'll mark it with red. And then underneath that is your last layer. Select all of your layers. and then hit delete. So all that's left are frames. And now you see that my layers match my frames. They have the color shifts already in them. So you can see the blue, the pink, the yellow. The animation still works. I can still save it now as a stage. And now it's just really simple. I don't have to worry about layer styles at all. Or I don't need to save it as a stage because it worked fine before. But this is what I want you to do to output as frames before we make the refined storyboard. Because what I just did is I have now frames that are like a printed flipbook of my animation. Make sense? So now I'm going to take this flipbook and I'm going to stop the timeline and I'm going to select all the frames in the timeline and drag them down to the trash. That doesn't get rid of my layers. I'm not hitting delete. I'm dragging them down to the trash. And then I can close the timeline because it's no longer helpful to me. 
Next thing I want to do, I want to make guides around each of my frames or around my square. Because now I have 36 layers that are each just torn out of my flipbook of animation. And I want to pick the nine best pages to make my refined storyboard with. So I'm going to crop to the edges just in case I'm going to use the crop tool and make sure that there's nothing outside of those that square. I want to check my image size. My image size is 8 by 8 by 150. That's fine. As long as it's 8 by 8 inches by something that's bigger than 72, you're good. Okay. If you didn't do it as a square, you can still do a refined storyboard. It's just going to be a slightly different dimension. And I can kind of help you work with that. The square is the easiest. And that's designed for social media campaigns. Right? All right. So now I have to find my middle frame. So I'm going to turn off the last frame, and I'm going to go, if I have 36 frames, the middle is going to be 18. But maybe that's not the middle frame that tells my story. So you refer back to your storyboard sketch, and you want your refined storyboard to also tell your story. So this is the second time my creature hits. So it's actually a little bit before that moment. It's right there. So that's going to be my middle frame. So I'm going to mark that green because that's the frame you build everything around. Okay, at this point, I am going to say image canvas size, and I'm going to grow the space around my center frame. This is layout in Photoshop. Canvas size expands your pixel window, your picture space. I'm going to expand it from 8 by 8 inches to 30 inches by 40 inches, the same size as the largest printable piece of paper on a professional four-color offset lithography press. So now it looks like I have a page from my flipbook from the middle of my story floating on a tablecloth of gray checkers. Right? Those gray checkers means empty space, but they can be hard to look at. So to make it easier to look at, I am going to make a new layer behind my first frame. So notice the difference between frames and layers. And I'm going to say edit fill with white. This is putting a clean white 100% normal tablecloth on the table. All right, now this is a good time to, to do save as. Not save because you don't want to overwrite your stage file to save as and to change this from assignment three stage to assignment three refined storyboard. I'm going to do it to the desktop. Okay, now <laughs> this is the layout part. The only way in Photoshop that you can have something at the exact center of a page is to grow your canvas size around it. That's why we made it from 8 by 8 to 30 by 40. And now, without having to move this or to use the rulers, I know that this is exactly center in this canvas. That's why I'd start with the middle frame. Now I have my first frame. And if I have my move tool and I have auto select turned off, if I just click, it's like dealing from the bottom of the deck. But the problem is, if I line up all of my different frames this way, without any space between them, it becomes really hard to see what's happening. So I need to build in a layout of gutters, of even space. And we're going to make it basically one inch between all of these. So let me turn these off for the moment. So this is new. We've already put guides. We've already have them synced up to our center stack of pages. Now I'm going to turn on what's called the grid. You can do it under view show grid or you can use command apostrophe. Command semicolon turns on and off your guides. Command apostrophe turns on and off your grid. And if you're in Photoshop and you're using inches, you can use your guides then to do a one inch space. Exactly one inch. It will snap to the grid from the edges 